Uh, okay, so my name is John. Uh, it's going to be talk about uh, don't break the glass. So basically, we're going to be talking a little bit here about uh, what to do uh, when the dire situation hits and, and, and uh, how we can sort of work around that. So as I said, my name is John. I'm a member of the uh, uh, CloudSec PMC. Uh, big background, security, operations, internet, uh, sort of mixture of things, plus I have the ability to do code. Um, as I'm wearing a security shirt today, I am a hacker to use that phrase. Here I'm using it in the, from the point of view of a developer. So not so much, ooh, bad guy TV hackers, but someone who actually likes to play with code. Um, the reason I'm mentioning that is a lot of stuff I'm going to be talking about here is the result of working backwards. I usually sort of like, you know, when I see a problem, it's like, how do I actually look at that, uh, figure out what's going on in the database in our examples here, excuse me, here, and then work our way back up. Um, so first thing I want to do is, I'm, I'm curious about the mix of people here. I wasn't sure how much of a, a show we were going to get. So do we have um, cloud operations people here? OK, we've got a few of those. Uh, developers? OK, some of those. Um, OK, cool. So how about, what's your guys' familiarity uh, on the developer side? Or is it more actual Java development? Or do we have people in here who are really familiar with SQL? OK, a few. OK, so that's what we're going to be sort of talking about here a little bit is uh, as we go through this. Um, my goal for this is really to, to give people, this isn't going to be a how-to. What I'm really sort of doing is trying to drop some clues and some breadcrumbs out to you guys to say when, when something happens or when you leave here, these are th some things you can sort of check out. So if something bad happens in the future, you'll have some experience in this and be able to actually go through and um, hopefully survive. Uh, so, quick overview of what we're going to be talking about here. This isn't a really long slide deck. Uh, we've got 20 slides. We got these talks are sort of short here, so we might rip through this pretty quickly. Uh, if you guys have any questions as we go along, raise, raise a hand. Let's sort of talk and make this interactive. It'll make it a lot more fun for everyone. So, before we start, we have a bunch of people here who have operational experience, uh, but really just sort of think about, I'm not going to spend time on this one, but in a production cloud, what does it look like, right? You're going to have everything done right, hopefully. So. A lot of HA, everything's being backed up, uh, got redundant storage, everything's been sort of tested, we know everything's good, that's, that's really what we're hopefully doing before we go into this. So what happened to me in uh, one of our production clouds, so let me talk a little bit about Stratasec, our company. Uh, we provide uh, secure cloud services for focus right now mainly on financial companies and some healthcare. Uh, so they're coming to us, we run on top of CloudStack, we're actually sort of providing a managed service. So they have the ability to interact with CloudStack, but usually they actually call us and say, we need a new VM, you know, this needs to be whatever it is. They contact us and we do something for them. So in this particular case, we had a user who had been with us for a while, and they decided that they wanted to actually have hands-on in the control panel which we were using. Uh, so this was a, a billing platform which sat in front of CloudStack. I'm not going to mention their name. Yes. I'm not going to mention their name. So the reason I'm not going to do this is as you guys can see here sort of quickly what happened. Um, I'm 99% sure I didn't click delete, but there's a small chance, and we haven't been able to reproduce this, so I don't want to start bad-mouthing them and have like that come out in the industry of what's going on. So if we could test this, if we could either test and get them to fix it, or you know, have some sort of a little bit more solid, I'd say who it is, what's going on. I've mentioned the name in the past on the board, so it's, it's, it's not impossible to find. Uh, but yeah, really, so this customer wanted access. So you know, we had some stuff in there we were testing out uh, they were using Windows VM, so we were testing the ability to actually bill for the VM and, and the OS license in there as well, but it wasn't really working. So I said, no big deal, I'm just gonna pull it out before I give it to them. They're gonna get confused when they see this license in there with the zero dollar cost, so let's remove that. And the next thing I know, the screen refreshes, and it had actually cleaned out the customer. So the first lesson here, we had our exponent values. Um, hopefully that's readable at the bottom. The actual value in CloudStack for how often it should go through and attempt to clean up things which have been marked as deleted was set to under 10 minutes. And as luck happens, this decided to be running. That 10 minute mark was about 20 or 30 seconds after I had clicked or however had decided to delete. So in my control panel, screen reloads, customer's gone, I hop over, hop over to CloudStack and uh, I suddenly start seeing stopping, 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 expunging, expunging, expunging. This is a customer who had 20 VMs, uh, probably a few terabytes worth of data. Uh, they're an active uh, trading company. And yeah, th this was, um, this is sort of what started coming out of my mouth very quickly. Uh, it was, 
my girlfriend was working from home the day and I happened to be working from home and she was on a conference call and she had to come in and close the door like I was loud and, and yeah, it was, it was not a pretty picture. So um, what did we do? The first thing we realized is this is happening, CloudStack is deleting things. Shut that bad boy down, don't let her do anything else worse because if, if you think through and we'll go through here in a few minutes, sort of the states uh, um, the VMs go through and there was actually a really good talk going on next door about a, um, uh, state syncing and, and all that type of aspect of CloudStack. But basically, you know, what'll happen is first you stop a VM, then you mark it destroyed, then it'll go through and expunge. So if I can actually stop CloudStack while it's in this process, because it was going through, luckily, one VM at a time, it wasn't just being really efficient, it was only being so, sort of efficient. Uh, but basically, you know, shut down CloudStack as soon as we could, get a, um, a SQL Server up and running, and then, you know, start thinking about whatever your favorite deity is and start praying that somehow you can make this thing go in the right direction. So, what I'm gonna try and do here is, is talk about some of the parts of the database and go hit out some, some of the more important tables you wanna take a peek at and the concept of some of the general uh, fields you'll see across these database tables so you can get an idea of how things relate back and forth to each other. Um, this is a, a snapshot of part of uh, the VM instance table. Basically, this is what we started seeing literally at that point in time was, you know, <laughs> it's a, in hindsight, it sort of it gives me something to laugh at. But when you suddenly see a bunch of machines, which all these should actually say are running, and you're seeing some are being stopped and some are actually starting to just clean out and delete, it, it's not a good thing. But part of it is actually understanding ahead of time, this is what I'm seeing. Where did I actually go and look in the database, figure this out, and all those type of things. So um, if I had to give you guys a list of, what, five tables, which I think you should you know, go look at, be familiar with, um, this would be them on, on your left. So. VM instance actually defines, that's sort of the main place where, an ins, where a VM is defined within CloudStack. Uh, volumes is, is sort of your main place for where your disks are stored, or disks are defined. Um, so some of these things, and we'll go talk through this in, in a few slides a little bit also. My point here is to talk about this from the point of view of knowing so you can do recovery, but we'll also show that you know, once you have this level of familiarity and understanding, you're able to actually do a lot more with CloudStack than either what was intended or what we've written APIs for so far. So you're able to actually get in and, and do a lot more. The, the structure in the back end is, is nice enough to allow us to do this type of thing. Um, on your right, common fields. So account IDs, instance IDs, these are all probably sort of understandable what they are. Uh, but basically what you'll see as you start going through looking at some of these tables is you'll see, okay, I see this one thing that's in two different places. Uh, CloudStack is uh, not really closely um, linked together, to use that phrase. So there's not actual hard joins and hard connections between these tables. So you'll, you'll see the same number at the same place and it's not gonna actually be uh, defined. So you have to actually go through by hand and actually look up these numbers. Um, is that making sense the way I'm saying that? Okay. So this is actually a screenshot from that day. Um, so you can sort of see this process I went through actually, okay, bring up that actual VM. It's like I track down the VM instance ID. Uh, you guys know what that is? If you actually, when you're looking in CloudStack, I don't think I have it running now, but if you, if you come into your, your, your uh, main instances, you'll see like this, you know, this number that says like I2 something. And like that last number is actually literally going back to a database. So that's where this comes from. So once you're able to actually grab that number, you can start going through and looking at where are my instances in the database. Um, let's go back and that account that someone just said delete that account, let's go ahead and mark that recovered because we don't really want that deleted. So by changing that, null, that value back to null, what this is is a, a, a timestamp. So if you look at the what, third one down on, on your right, I've thrown three fields there together. Uh, created, updated, and removed. So really what these are, they're intended to be timestamps, which is actually sort of handy. You can go back and see when something was created or last time something was modified. But a way a lot of the logic works in CloudStack is once a value has been set to something other than null for removed, CloudStack, actually, that's sort of its concept of, oh, it's actually been deleted. So the beauty of this is when something gets deleted in CloudStack, you actually have the ability to go back and just find that record and mark it undeleted instead of having to actually create the VM record, that whole database record from scratch, which would take a lot more work. So the one comment I wanna make about this is, uh, you saw that last slide, SQL, and obviously these, what, six or seven lines isn't gonna be all that you need to restore a database. There's a few pieces missing here from this screenshot, and the reason why is, uh, in, in Squirrel SQL, which I use, you're able to actually go in, 
in the GUI tables and right click on something and say make this editable so I can actually change it without typing SQL, which is really cool and handy. But the bad side of that is five minutes later, if you're distracted or something else, you can't see what you just updated. So I think for doing this, I mean, I, the last thing I want to do is start recommending, you know, here's how you modify SQL in production. But if you have to do something like this, or even in development, it, from my experience, if you actually start doing modifications in the SQL itself, uh, you're able to actually go back and modify or see what you typed. And, you know, if you lose your train of thought, you can see where you are and be able to get back into that. And uh, the one thing I did mention was on a previous slide, before we start doing any of this type of stuff, back up your database. Any questions so far? Yeah. Do you have good documentation of the database layout and what everything is? So the, describe, table. So the question was, do we have a good documentation layout uh, for uh, the CloudStack database schema? No. Um, people ask about that occasionally. And I think I've taken a stab at running a, uh, a commercial um, program which we'll go through and map it out and, and, and generate it for you. So has everyone in here actually seen the sort of the cloud stack? Or have you ever seen the database itself at all? OK. Um, yeah. They're not enforced. Oh, hey, it's up there. What do you know? Um, so where's my mouse? Excuse me. Okay. So this was sort of me preparing for this demo, but let me go over and give you guys a quick peek around. So this is uh, the CloudStack database itself. And on the left here, if you guys aren't familiar with the um, Squirrel SQL, this is sort of a list of the tables in the database. So the first thing you see, there's a lot of tables in here. So to generate the, a GUI of the schema, an actual map, you'd need a pretty big wall, or, or the PDF, when you start looking at it, you have to, it's, I think it's using like a six point font. You have to really sort of drill down in, but still, I mean, I'm sort of similar to you, like I, I to me, it makes sense if I can actually visually connect things together. So I think we might take a stab at that again and see if we can uh, come up with it. But so, and I need to be careful what I show you guys on this, because this is one of our systems. Um, but you can see this is, I'm still scrolling it. There's so many tables in here. And that, this is why I went back and actually gave you guys a list of five, so that when you're actually looking at things, instead of actually trying to figure out, okay, we, it gets when we come down to a VM. So, well, here's the VM instance one I was talking about, but also, okay, which one of these, if I'm just looking at this for the first time, has my VM defined in it? So this is why I'm saying go through and get a little familiar with this ahead of time. So in the event, you've, you've at least seen it before, and you can, uh, have some familiarity with that. So let's see, now I wanna go back to this. So, we've been doing some, some fun things, like I said, once we got this level of familiarity uh, with what's going on, we got a little more comfortable. It's, it's, hopefully we haven't got ourselves too comfortable. We've, we've been doing some of these sort of modifications. So, one of our customers was, uh, um, we were moving them from our old, uh, cloud orchestration platform, which I've blogged about. We used to use OnApp, and we were trying to take that VM and bring it into CloudStack. So we, you know, we made a, we made an image of it. We brought it in. We hadn't actually. I know in the API, when you're creating an instance, you can actually specify now the IP address. I think this was probably a year or two ago, so we didn't have that ability. So we literally wanted to give that customer back that VM with the same IP which they were used to having. So how do we do it? Well, it's you know about eight or nine lines of, of SQL. More recently, another example to throw up for you guys, we had a customer who their, their VMs were split between two accounts, and they wanted to be able to see all their stuff on one screen without, you know, log out, log into that one, log out, log into this one. So, okay, we can do that. Let's go ahead and move that customer over to another account. So this isn't perfect working the way it is right now. Uh, there's, I haven't tracked down, there's one change we had to actually, the firewall rules don't move cleanly, unfortunately, yet. So we've had to, we found that we, uh, drop the network interface, bring it back in, and then reapply the firewall rules, it'll get it. But I mean, that's, I've still saved a ton of work, so it, it's a small bit of pain for us to do that. So how can you prepare? Um, this first bullet I've got on here, I think is sort of interesting for folks, 
because I don't think it's something. This is, so as Stratasec, we, we talk about, you'll see us using the phrase compliance as a service. And people always ask me, like, what, what is that? So what we're actually offering to our customers is security by itself isn't really a, a huge draw. I mean, we, we care about security and it's something that's important to us, but for enterprises, what they really care about is compliance. So within uh, Stratasec, we're always thinking about compliance and policy and rules and regulations. So when I say policy, what I'm talking about is, you know, put a document together, go through, um, again, I don't have it up, but go through, there's a, uh, the, uh, the settings in cloud stack and sort of understand what's there and what needs to be modified and think about how do I want those set in my production cloud. Put those into a document so that if you're creating a new uh, cloud or if you're creating you know, a new instance or something's changed, you can go through on either a weekly or monthly basis and go, is this set the way I think it's set or did somehow someone change expunge, which we should probably have it you know, once every few hours or once every few days, did someone turn that down to five minutes? So if you've got some sort of way of actually checking this and, and going back and referring to yourself and actually having a, a set list, it makes this type of thing a lot easier. Um, backup testing. Everyone here backs up their stuff, right? So the second part of that is, do you encrypt your backups? Hopefully, yes. The third part is, don't store your backups in CloudStack. So if you're going to back this type of stuff up, have it outside somewhere, or otherwise you're going to really bite yourself. Uh, so talk a little bit about what we're working on now. We've got this partially working. Uh, what we're trying to do is a concept, we've talked about this in a dev list a little bit, but we're coming up with the concept of a production lock. So if a customer, like I said, someone's doing Forex trading, uh, trading financial uh, currencies, they're pretty much guaranteed they don't want that thing shut down or reboot anything to happen to it, right? That's lock and load, leave that thing there, don't touch it, don't look at it sideways, don't even think about patching it. So what we're actually doing now is, is going into CloudStack and putting a flag in so that if CloudStack, if someone comes in, either, either you know, a control panel or a CloudStack or a customer or some code we've written at the API level and says delete, reboot, do any of these things, CloudStack will go, there's a flag set telling me not to do this, I'm not gonna do it. So we've got it working for the VMs right now. Um, we really need, it, it's, we need to clean up and make it a little bit pretty before we go in and release it out to the community. But our intention is to have it for VMs, for storage, and for networks, and I'm open to any other ideas if you guys have parts which we could do with this for, yeah. No, so this is in, in uh, Stratasec has their own internal yeah. Git tree, unfortunately. Um, so we've, pretty much everything we're doing, we either have pushed out or we intend to push out. So this is one of the ones we've done inside. It's, we, we talked about it on, on the dev list. People had some interest, but basically we needed to get something done quickly and in place. That's why it's, it's ugly and nasty, and um, I tend to try and want to give out to the general public, be something a little bit neater and cleaner, so it is coming. Um, on the storage side, we're looking at locking down so either you can't change the size of the storage, can't make it bigger or smaller or delete it, or even do snapshots. So really just sort of no changes. And then we want to add it into the GUI so that you know, if someone coming in on the, the web UI can literally click something and go, we're safe. So that should be, we'll probably have it out to the community, I'm guessing six to eight weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we looked at that as, um, I have, thanks, I, haven't, I hadn't thought about that for a while, but yeah, when we were actually doing this, we looked at that as an example. Um, uh, so the question was, does this look like uh, Amazon's termination protection, which they have available? So in Amazon, I think it's, it, it stops you from, it's basically the same thing, but it's a single flag that says, basically don't, either don't terminate, or I don't think it says don't delete. Um, do you remember it? It's, they call terminate. Yeah. But, yeah yeah, so we saw that and we thought that's, that's sort of where we are right now, that's our starting point, but we wanted to go ahead and make it more granular so we could say, you know, maybe we don't care too much about the VM can be just, you know, rebooted, that's really not a huge deal, right? But whatever you do, please, Jesus, don't delete the actual storage itself. So we're trying to go a little more granular, but that's exactly where we're going. Um, so what I want to do is give you guys a little bit of homework. And a few things which I think if you do this in either you know, your dev cloud or a production cloud, just sort of go through and get a feel for what you guys have and sort of get in and look at it. Uh, the one thing I sort of blew through pretty quickly is when you're doing this in, in SQL, at least for me, I, I'm you know command line guy, I've been with Unix for, I don't know, 20, 30 years, um, but at the same time, for something like this, I want a GUI. I mean, if, if you look at, like I said, back to this thing, some of these, Let's see, I know I can look at volumes. 
there's a lot of data in here, right? So if you're not, at least for me, if I'm not looking at this in a visual manner, if this was actually MySQL command line, it would take me forever to keep track of what's going on and, and actually be able to make sense of things. So I'm able to move around a lot quicker in here. And, and so for me personally, at least, I'd say, if you're going to play with this type of stuff, use a UI. Um, but you know, go and find, create a, create a VM on your system, then go and get the ID off it, then go back to the database and go, okay, where is that in the database? So you find the instance of it, find where the NICs are, how the NICs are defined, look at how the, the firewall stuff is done in there, and then delete it in, in CloudStack. And then go back and see if you can actually go, here's why I take that thing and restore it. I mean, it's, it's most of the commands are what I gave you before, and if people want more detail, I'm happy to uh, either blog about it or, or, or go into more detail on the wiki. Um, but yeah, I think that'd be sort of fun for you guys, I hope. I mean, my definition of fun is sort of weird. But uh, I think that's it, yeah. Uh, questions? Was this something any of you guys would see yourself doing um, either for homework or would you consider using this in the future for uh, your environment? Yes, no? Yeah. Really? Cool, I'm not the only crazy one. We had an expunge delay of 24 hours, though, so it was a little nicer. It's the same here. The only thing we actually did wrong in the past is that we also made some states in the apps. And what you can kind of screw up with is if you actually change states in the apps, you're not updating the link table, for instance. So then a while later, when you actually start to delete the network, no, that's okay. It's just, it's, you're, 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 it, it, you're having a good conversation. It'd be sort of fun to catch it on the yeah. audio. Is this actually on? He is. It's on now. It's on. Okay. Um, so actually, when you update the state of a VM um, and uh, you actually destroy it outside of CloudStack, then you're not upda updating the NIC table, for instance. So your NIC count's not going to decrease. And then later on, when you try to destroy a network, the network's never going to get destroyed because there's still a NIC plugged on it. So that those kind of issues are actually things that you have to take into account when you start fiddling around with the database. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's there's, and it, there's a fine line which really takes the experience to play with the stuff and, and, and get a feel for it. Because what will happen is, you know, in, in the heat of the moment when you're going through trying to get that that poor database or that uh, VM back up and running, uh, you're not always looking at every single field in there. And so, like, yeah, when I've played with the NIC stuff, I've actually ignored the, the NIC count. It's like, oh, it's just a number. It doesn't seem to do anything. I don't have to worry about that. But it might come back and bite you a few weeks later when you're trying to clean up. Uh, question? Just point out, uh, I, haven't, I haven't had to necessarily do this in the context of deleting VMs, but in terms of, like, I've accidentally typoed the path to an NFS share on a SAN and things like that. And unfortunately, it's also, in some signs, this is almost a sign of there's need for improvement within CloudStack to make it easier to modify something after you create it if you've made a mistake by accident and the resource can't come online. Hmm. Yeah, so any type of, love the feedback. Anytime I hear something like that, I mean, it's either bring it up on the dev list or bring it to us. If there's any way we can make this stuff better, uh, one of the thoughts I had in here is, you see, I, I always joke about the, um, the SQL API. Uh, you know, it, it's not really right. But we thought about, can we make uh, APIs for doing this type of undelete or something like this? And at some point we can. Some of these we can probably add in, but still also at the same time, it's like, you saw what I said, the first thing I did is shut down CloudStack. So I, I need to be able to, at least on some of them, access outside the, the API. but. Um, for something like if there's ways we can improve and make things easier to either modify something after the fact or um, give us a little more concrete. I mean, you were talking about resources on a, was it the SAN? In the case, um, example, I caught, cut and pasted a NFS share last week for secondary storage from a, a GUI which, added a, which had the name in quotes, so I ended up pasting a quote. And the oh, store I saw you mentioned that somewhere. I think I, I may I have mentioned it. Maybe it was last year, but anyways, go ahead. So you, you had, I ended up trying to find where it was in SQL, ended up, eventually kind of gave up, and in that case, I just resorted to deleting it, deleting it out of the GUI and then creating a new instance. And although it really doesn't matter as much, I guess it's, granted, it's nice to have a whole record of the history in SQL, but when I've done large-scale large work, it 
I, I've had cases where I've had 30,000 plus log entries and that starts bogging clock stack down. So eventually there is going to need to be some sort of archiving done or move to the secondary table. Yeah. Um, so this, uh, well, I'm thinking of these slides will be online in five minutes. Um, uh, good question. So I put all my stuff on SlideShare. I believe, oh, I'll definitely sort of send out a link on, on Twitter once I have them up. I believe uh, usually at the end of these shows, Aaron or one of us will actually put together like a, you know, a recap of blog post which goes over everyone's slide decks. Um, but worst case, if you give me your contact info after, I'll make sure I get to you. Yes. Mine's not up there yet. Um, I tend to tweak until the very last second. Procrastinator. Um, and then the other question I had is, would there be interest if I did a blog post on this or a series of blog posts to actually go in more detail on the SQL? Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So along the lines of the, um, the, the, the SQL statement, I'm not as familiar with the database itself, but I assume that there are certain patterns in there. Do you have like some kind of SQL crash kit that you can kind of dig into, um, you know, in these kind of emergency situations where you have maybe a common, not that it's a common occurrence, but deleting a VM inadvertently, you know, I need to get this reversed. So shut the server down, I don't have an API, reach into my SQL toolkit and, you know, pick, find the user's ID and then I can execute these series of commands in batch. Um, I'm not sure if I have it. I don't have it up right now. I don't want to, um, our internal, uh, uh, our internal wiki, we have those. So I can probably get some of those a little more public. And that's where when I was through these, a uh, few of these slides up, that's where they're, we've got a collection of doing exactly this for, I mean, we do it for, we're using stuff on the back end, so we've got like, not database stuff, but like some of our CLI things. So yeah, we, that's, we can throw something like that together. Other questions? Yeah. Uh, how slash Y can be plugged in or will get sent to <laughs> um, Quite honestly, it was probably when I was initially setting up the cloud. Uh, this one, we spun up last September and we were having some issues when we built it with uh, getting um, CloudStack to get Ceph to spin up uh, the storage part, and I'm guessing we just, we're, we're create, delete, create, delete, create, delete, and we're like, you know, keep that low and just get rid of the junk quickly, and yeah, yeah. And then the other part, uh, which uh, should probably be worth mentioning is, when you're doing this type of thing from an operation point, call the customer, let them know what's going on. Um, you know, I called the customer in this case, and I'm like, oh, I guess it's time to test backups, and I'm like, okay, and it turned out this one VM was something we'd given them when they were uh, in a demo state with us, so our demo VM is like, you know, here it is, we're not going to be managing it as tightly, we're not backing it up, blah, 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 blah. And they had transitioned that demo VM into production, and they weren't really clear with us on, on when that happened, so it wasn't being backed up. Um, so that was, that was a very tough evening. Uh, there was a lot of drinking done the next day. Yeah. Um, well, I think I'm going to let you guys go to lunch. Was there any other questions? Um, yeah. Just had one kind of in the context of manual database updates and uh, potential uh, new features for CloudStack. One of the things that we've also run into where we had to go into the SQL database was when we had problems with the management server, weird problems where suddenly it thinks all the hypervisor hosts are offline and then it kicks off HA to every single VM on the cloud. And we've had to shut it down, go into the HA tables, change the state so that we're not trying to migrate every VM from one host to another yeah. when it comes back up. But if there was some sort of HA manager within CloudStack that you could go in and just cancel migrations or manage migrations and yeah. those types of things. It would yeah, be that, that's really a good nice. one. There's a, another one which has been us related to that. Um, when CloudStack is doing its, its HA test, um, if, a, a no, if a host goes offline and then comes back, CloudStack goes through and starts uh, investigating all the VMs to see are they still running, what really happened over here. And part of how it does that is if it goes to see if a VM is alive, it SSHs into the host, uh, I think it hops up to the virtual router and then tries to ping the VM. So as a security company, we've got firewalls left and right and everything's shut down pretty tight, including ping down to the general public. And so the response comes back that, oh, the, no ping, the VM's dead. And then it goes back to the host and back to CloudStack and CloudStack goes, well, I guess I'll delete whatever's running. It's in some strange state. So it comes back to the host and deletes the VM, which was running perfectly fine. Yeah, so that's, 
it'd be interesting to expose a little bit more stuff like that. Good, good point. Anyone else? Cool. I've got one more talk today. I'm going to do a little advertising here at 3.15, I believe it is. Uh, we're gonna, going to be talking next door about uh, um, this open SSL craziness, which happened earlier this week. So if you guys are interested or have any questions about that, uh, come. That, that should be a pretty fun talk, too. Thanks, guys.